M0FXP, welcome to my videos on the USDX SDR device, three band, no battery, but it could have a battery, plenty of room in there, and it could have quite a big speaker. They've got the very tiny one that you would see on other USDX models. The buttons just pull off, and we're going to take this apart and fit this new screen. Pull off the buttons, like so, and then you've got the Allen keys either side, so we'll just take them off now. It does dismantle very easily, and I'll show you where you can program firmware on this. So that's the, the bolts off on this side. Note there's a PTT just here. And then you've got the, the mic PTT, and it also says dash dit dit. And then the, test, the PTT is marked as test, and you've got earphone speaker next to it. So once you get to this point, it will just lift out like so, okay? Which is quite handy, I think. So it's quite easy to dismantle. There's no bolt holding the BNC in. So at this point, because I did look at undoing these bolts, but at this point you can actually pull the thing apart, literally just pull it apart, go easy. Now note that it does have to sort of be pushed in, because if you don't push it in correctly, the upper case doesn't clip in properly, so you need that sort of, it needs to be down so that the outer case fits. Because if the outer case doesn't fit properly, the buttons, when they slide on, keep falling off. Uh, I've noticed though, with the, if you look there, with the volume one, it's a bit short, to be honest. So I'm thinking I might just cut, cut the some of the end off. To shorten it and then then it'll be fine it's a bit short and obviously if these buttons need to protrude as well main mode and menu and they do as long as you push that board in like i said so you just put it like so the speaker uh, just keep going there it does just pull out of course quite stiff the speaker is taped to the front as you can see these little budget tiny speakers just taped there to the front and but if you look at the case the back case you've easily got room in there to add a battery and another speaker so I don't know why they haven't done that because uh, that would because I think the actual design of the unit is it's got good potential but it's it's just paying attention to finer details uh, is the problem now firmware wise and I might have a go at this um, you would connect to these pins here there's no pins there but solder solder or just poke in some gpio pins there in these you know you can see them there marked just here if we zoom in you'll see them marked there so these you would use your programmer with i use a arduino uno like this i've already got the pins there ready you can see them marked from 10 to ground and then once I've got my pins added here, okay, just here, and then I can connect and, and firmware. Now it gets, when it turns on, it comes on with 102WA, so I will look that up. Now I'm, I do want to put on the firmware by GWARDI, but I don't know if his firmware will allow for the the volume control, but it, that is a hardware volume increase, so it might not matter. But anyway, it's coming up with 102WA. I will look that up. But otherwise, we're going to undo these four screws here. And there are some spacers there as well. So we just whip that off. Let, have a good look. It's an uh, interesting design. I have... I have sort of done some tests on it, listening to the audio, and it actually went up to about nine watts. You can see all the the way they've done this. So, hmm, it's an interesting device. I'm not saying I recommend it or not, uh, but it even says here LCD 1602, which is what my one says. Although we do have an A, so let's see. The, the, the short screws are out. 
the bolts look like they can stay in place then we'll pull it out on other devices underneath here you have the the pins for doing the firmware but like I said it's just here instead shame it broke I wonder if it's even fixable you've got that leak of LCD is that even fixable I won't throw it away so we need to find eventually it's gonna go back in place just need to find a um, Okay, got some uh, pins here ready. Soldering iron on the go. Okay. Soldered. I am no good at soldering, you just dive in. So anyway, there's the board. Let's put it back on the board and just turn it on and see if we even get a screen. The good thing is, it came from Amazon, so if there's a problem, I can send it back. And I think many of us are buying from Amazon now, aren't we? So let's get some power on this and just see if it turns on. Like so. Power, then on. Ah, it's on. I don't know if blue was the right choice of colours, but I'm sure I could tweak the firmware. But the screen has worked. Uh, still looks quite cool, actually. So let's get an antenna on here and a speaker. Power, BNC connector, long wire, 49 to 1 balance. Speaker on the right-hand side here. It definitely gets loud. So let's, there's a few signals there. It's early in the morning here in the UK. So let's just tune a bit. LSB. Someone there. There's your menu. Actually, no, it's your mode. All the different menus. So it's all working. Let's put it back in the case. Okay, all assembled, blue screen looks nice. I've cut the volume button shorter, I took about two millimeters off the bottom, and now it doesn't just fall off. The left button is fine, it's, but they have, if you look inside it, because it's a push button, yeah? To select functions if you go menu. You compress it, okay, and turn. Come out of menu, and if you want to go along the frequency, look. And, yeah, I'm using the external speaker. I'm going to add a, a different speaker today, and I'll make a video on that. And I'm probably going to add a little battery inside it as well. Now, the blue screen, although it, on the camera it looks nice, yeah, I could do with the yellow or the lighter colour standing out a bit more. Maybe that's adjustable in firmware. The firmware that this has got, if I turn it off then on, is 102A WA5. So I'm, the only reason I haven't already added firm, different firmware, so I'm worried that it's going to stop my volume button from working because normally with the other firmwares, you press and turn volume and that does, well, I don't know if that did that work. Yes, it does. It did sort of work. So let's try again. Press. Yeah, it is working. So I'm worried that I'll lose this button working if I change the firmware. And I do like the convenience of that volume. I got a feeling when the conditions are good. It's gonna be quite good later. The, uh, if I press, Menu, go to the noise reduction. I am having fun with this. I have asked them for a partial refund while well, they've given it me already. Because obviously the screen had that 
LCD leak. The buttons were falling off. When I first tinkered with it, I thought this is a complete loss. But after a bit of perseverance, I've realised it's quite a nice, neat little unit. Um, uh, and the price is, is okay, I would say. Um, but obviously I haven't had any contacts yet. Tested the audio, seems I used the word okay. So just look at the noise reduction. The external mic, I think, was rubbish, but the CW key worked fine. So there's um, noise reduction, 1.9 menu, press, on a 2, and then menu out, I think it did actually sound better, let's find someone. You're pressing along like that to move the cursor along, we can find someone. I mean, it's a lot of QRM today, so I think we'll do more tests. But overall, the screen's working, the whole thing's working again now. Bye for now.